the the green heroes actually event was something that I would like to test out and see how many will participate, how many people will participate actually, and to see it as an experiment in a way that if we change the narrative and if we start talking positively about how, what we are actually doing towards climate change or sustainable development already in our lives without realizing that and give the people the opportunity to get some inspiration from other activities without being bullied into quotes about what they do wrong. Because mostly in climate change, the topic is that we don't have any hope in this planet and we cannot do anything because we're so small and um, the biggest uh, uh, the biggest responsibilities are the big companies and the corporations and we cannot do anything. Let's, let's consume as much as we can and die in a place full of plastic. And I have heard a lot of times this narrative and it actually personally makes me extremely mad and sad at the same time because it's like you have the opportunity to change something not only for the others but also for yourself to have a better life and you just throw it out of your hand because you're like, no. <laughs> You, you choose not to take action. And I was pretty glad to see that 56 people are actually took part in that. And the feedback that I got was that besides the things that they were doing, they got inspired to what else they can do without being obliged to do so, but in a more uh, polite and kind way that let them reflect. So I would like to share my screen and and start talking a little bit about that. And as I said, uh, I would like to talk about the sample because that was interesting part for me as well to see how many participants it will be and what kind of characteristics because all the Green Mount was, uh, took, part, uh, took place in English. So I wanted to see, are there actually Estonian students and uh, Estonian academic uh, staff or Estonian people taking, um, taking action, uh, fill this form or is just international students? Uh, so I, the, the, the total amount of participants were 56 and I chose to check some metrics and some sample characteristics such as gender, the abilities, because we talked about uh, inclusivity. So I wanted to see how much we're actually including people and how much people are participating as well from both sides. Uh, country of ori origin and country of current residency. Coronavirus didn't let us to, to move so much, so it is also quite important to check at that. And also if the people are related with Tallinn University or not. So in the right side, you can see how was the question formed, because I think that inclusivity is much important from the organization as well, what you present and what you think, that how many genders are there. Uh, hopefully science has some answers towards this, but people tend to be very conservative regarding that and don't include it. I have to say that I received quite a lot of spamming regarding this in the forms. So, um, but, uh, however, the, the answers that we mostly got it was female with 49 answers and male two answers. If you see that there are differences regarding the sample, I, I didn't do it in person tests because the number of participants wasn't so high. So it's just uh, uh, absolute numbers, and uh, the, no question was mandatory. So some people have just skipped to answer some questions. So if, you, that, if the, the numbers doesn't match, it's because of that. Uh, regarding the abilities, um, I have added, and also in all the registration forms, and you have seen it as well of Green Month, if there are some, issue, uh, some disabilities that the person, the participant is actually having, from the one hand about the inclusivity, as I already mentioned, but on the other, if there are some issues in the audience, then we can somehow change the format of the event so everybody can equally participate. So that was quite interesting for me, analyzing the data that uh, 20, uh, 49 of the participants were currently living in Estonia, 35 of them were Estonians, and we had participants from Russia, Northern Macedonia, uh, Germany, Turkey, Greece, Ireland, the Netherlands, Ro uh, Romania, Sri Lanka, that they are currently living in Estonia, and most of them are students of Tallinn University. So it's one more proof that the, the university is quite international, even though we tend to forget that sometimes. And also there were some Estonian students that were also studying abroad or living at the moment abroad in Belgium and in Germany. 
We had also people that they weren't involved at Tallinn University, and we will get uh, to that soon to see how, how many people within the university, how many people outside university actually participated. And participants that were living in Finland, participants that were living in Germany, Greece, Ukraine, and Pakistan. So as I told you about their relationship with the Tallinn University, the high, most of the students were bachelor students, 19 participants, and after that were people that were not actually involved in Tallinn University, with Tallinn University. After the master students were following, as well as the alumni, and then PhD researchers, academic and administrative staff. There was also the option to be for technical staff, but we didn't have any, um, any person filling the form from technical staff. And what I was actually very surprised that even though it was in English, uh, even though there were people um, outside the university, but here I just put and I kept only the data from the people that were uh, involved with Tallinn University. Because of course, if you're living in a foreign country and you don't, or you're not involved with Tallinn University, why to speak Estonian? Uh, it would be great, but most of the times it doesn't happen. So as we see that uh, the, the most of the people were actually students and all of them were speaking Estonian in their mostly used uh, language. So there are not so high percentage of international students, but mostly local. And the survey had some categories, I think two, four, six, I was about to say five. So that's why I said some, so there were six regarding water, food, energy, textiles, paper and waste. So how the next section is organized is basically to see the questions. You can see in the slides the numbers of the answers, but um, I would like to highlight uh, some of them mostly because it's a lot of information and you have probably already filled it. So th there is no point to just read what is in the slide. I will just keep the higher numbers here that in the regarding water that most of the people are actually turning off the tap while brushing their teeth. And what I was mostly surprised about is how many liters uh, we actually consume when we brush our teeth. But here I need my notes because I don't remember exactly and I don't want to lie to you. So bear with me one second to find my notes. And Yes, so basically each time you're brushing your teeth, if you let your tap running, it consumes 15 liters of water. So if you consider that you brush your teeth twice per day, so that means it's 30 liters per water per person. And if you think that you consume for your hydration two liters for water per day, you can say that actually for uh, one day, the water that you actually uh, waste is the water that you can drink for 15 days. That's quite a lot. And regarding the dishwasher was something that I didn't believe as well. Uh, and many people too, when they, uh, th we were discussing about the form that uh, the dishwasher consumes less water than if you wash the same amount of, uh, of dishes by hand. And, uh, I can give you some numbers also for that. So if a full load, if you wash it by hand, it is 102 liters. And when you wash it uh, by dishwasher with an energy star rated dishwasher is about 11. So it's 10 times more. So it's quite a lot again. Uh, I think I don't have to explain why if you fully load your washing machine for washing clothes, or if you fully load your dishwasher, it's benefiting for the environment is actually saving resources. The more you put, the less uh, um, the less energy you need to use for several loads. So with one load, all of them together and, and you're fine. The same it has to do with the, with the showers, taking short showers instead of baths. I guess, again, I have numbers for that. So if you have a shower head that release, uh, the, the average one releases about 9.5 liters per minute. So with having a shower, short shower of 10 minutes, you use mostly 94 liters of water. But if you may have a bath, it's about 264. So it's again, two or three times more. And yeah, it, it's not very sustainable, you could say. 
Regarding numbers, I think it's the only slide that I have used so much, so many, so I don't have to remember anything by heart later on. And as we had the option others, I would like to share with you some ideas that uh, the participant actually shared. The one is for those that use air conditioner and they collect the water and to water their plants uh, to turn off the, the tap when they are having showers or rinsing themselves and just oh, turn on the water when they just rinse. Um, I think that this is the most, like, as a child, I have heard it a lot regarding children, that they're like, oh, I don't want to turn off the tap because I like the sound of the water. So I can understand it, but at the same time, I guess it's a habit that you have to learn. So if you just try it out, after 14 days, you will be able to do it. Or uh, so, so try it out for 14 or to 21 days, and if it doesn't work, uh, I don't know what else to say. Or for watering plants, uh, one person wrote that use pockets or something outside. I think it's just a collection or with a bucket or something of rainwater and use it to uh, plant, uh, to, to water the plants. Uh, then we have the food. Uh, in the food, as I see that most of the people, uh, they put that they eat less meat, poultry and fish. And during Green Month, we watched also documentary about uh, uh, agriculture and food. Um, the, the name is Kissed Ground, uh, regenerative agriculture. And regarding food, what I have to mention mostly is that the beef is one of the most wasteful productions. Uh, because they create a lot of greenhouse uh, gas emissions. And it's not that it was, uh, if the question could be like, okay, it was always like this, why now? The problem is that the production has been so much industrialized, so we have much more um, cows than we should have. And that's one of the reasons that the greenhouse emissions are raising as well. So the least you're consuming meat, the better you do to, to the planet and to yourself as well. And I was quite interested at the sale that 25 people are, have actually set up their own herb garden. Um, I'm very glad that for some people that are already here today have seen their herb garden. I'm very happy about that. And it, it, there is also movement going on more to give away food on food sharing apps or also food layer that was with us uh, in two events during the Green Month talks talked about how we can actually fight food waste and to don't let anything end up in the trash bin in the end, but to use all the resources that we have. And also uh, about the third trade label, I'm also very happy to say that it's 27 people. And we had also this opportunity to have uh, Christina Mant from Mondo uh, to talk about responsible consumption and what it is actually the fair trade label and where we can find this, these items and how we can use them and what it is, basically how it supports sustainability. Some other ideas that the people brought is to buy local food and organic, um, which is great and I have to mention here that it's good to buy local, but it's important also to buy seasonal. So if you compare buying tomatoes from Sweden uh, that are grown in a greenhouse than to buy tomatoes from Greece or from Italy or from Spain, those from Sweden, if you're living in Sweden, you buy from Sweden or in Estonia because it's closer than in Greece, for instance, it actually has higher impact uh compared to buying fresh and seasonal from the countries that are actually producing them uh i will not get into more scientific details because i'm not an expert in that but i was very surprised towards that because i was thinking that okay whatever i do in my house or close to me is better but actually the proximity it doesn't have is not the main uh, and the transportation is not the main source of emissions it has to do a lot with local and seasonal uh, food. Then it's about bio waste. We also discovered and talked with the Kaylee Volkov from uh, Paulik uh, about how important it is actually to use bio waste. And if you have also garden to make compost out of it and use it afterwards to cultivate your own food. 
Uh, and quite important point thing from their answers was that they are planning their meals in a way that they don't have leftovers. And when they have leftovers, they try to do something, something else. Uh, or if you have chicken, much better, you can give it food uh, for them too. About energy. Um, I was quite surprised to see how so much higher rates regarding turning off screens or switching off appliances, uh, which is quite nice because it actually consumes quite a lot. So it doesn't have so much difference if you have it in standby or on. Uh, so it's better if you don't use something to turn it off. However, I was reading some articles regarding that if you switch off the, um, uh, the light switchers, uh, it actually consumes more than to leave it open. But again, I will say that I'm not an expert. You can search about that and find out your own uh, explanation and what fits you better regarding this. But uh, in my mind, uh, and something that I, I can say and support is whatever you don't use or you don't need it on, just turn it off. Uh, and especially in a country that everything is digital and everything is uh, IT related and we have so many IT companies and we're working from our computers, they just need some time to rest as well. So let them rest and switch them off. Uh, and uh, with free public transportation in Tallinn, uh, I wasn't surprised that 52 of the answers was that people are either biking, either walking or using uh, uh, public transport. One sad part, I could say, is the renewable energy, because mostly if we can switch our, the, the most uh, negative ecological footprint about uh, in our everyday life is mostly from energy. And whenever you have oil shale, so your electricity is coming from oil shale, then this has the most negative um, impact, uh, ecological footprint and environmental impact. So to use renewable sources of energy is actually something that can benefit you and the environment as well. Textiles. Um, I'm very happy for that, uh, that people are actually buying from secondhand shops are either repair by themselves or upcycle their uh, clothes or even donate. Um, I haven't added here the recycling and we had a lot of talks about this in a minimalism workshop in one of the meetings talking about why not recycle, what, what is happening in that industry and this, are they actually recycled? And we said that about the textiles, the most safe way is to actually upcycle it and use it in something else than to put it in a recycling process because most of the times it gets incinerated. Uh, so, and I'm very happy also that we do a big donation. And currently this week, I'm collecting all the items for the International Women Club of Tallinn that they support local charities and uh, people that were participating in the minimalism group, including me as well, uh, were actually collecting clothes and items that we don't want and they're in good condition and they can be used from other people. So that's also very nice. And repairing and upcycling is a great way that can make you feel creative and uh, connect you also with, with other people. And I don't know, like, Using secondhand clothes for me, and especially the, from friends or making swaps, is that you don't just wear a cloth, you wear the story, it's history. So it's very nice and connecting people, and especially when they share with you where they were wearing this cloth and how it was for them and so on. So it's a very nice uh, way to connect as well with others. And as I said, other ideas is to exchange clothes, either with friends or with other people. We did, I did, um, clothes up event in November and it was massive. I will send you later all the link from all the things that we collected. We collected I think about 400 pieces and we exchanged the 100 of them and the other together went for donation. But we have so much stuff and we never feel that, you know, enough that we have enough. But it's great that we, these are used, these are getting out of us and they can be useful for somebody else. And very important uh, idea or inspiring uh, for me at least is that I buy items that I know I can wear for many, many years. Another way I could say could be the capsule wardrobe, the so-called capsule wardrobe that we have specific uh, type of garments that you can use 
several times and you can combine them with different ones so you don't have the special ones but uh, uh, some that uh, they can fit with everything. Paper. Um, I wasn't surprised at all with 56 uh, participants answering that they pay my bills online or via my phone. I was expecting that totally. Uh, and I'm very happy that most of the things here are happening actually digitally. So we don't have so much money. It's not, sorry, so much paper going back and forth and also transportation because all of these things need to be sent. Um, it is, uh, I, I opt for receipts at the supermarket while shopping at the self-service counters. I have seen it almost in all supermarkets in Estonia that whenever you go to pay, either they have it uh, as um, uh, automatic setting that they don't print besides you tick the box. And in other supermarkets, you can they print it by default, but you have this tick box that you can actually opt out for the receipt. And receipts are mostly um, a piece of paper that is not recycled, even though the recycling companies are accepting it. I really have no idea what they're doing with it, but they, it cannot be recycled. So the less that you have, the better. And um, the amazing thing that Omniva have in Estonia that you can actually ask for your apartment sticker that you don't want commercial and it doesn't, it stops arriving to you. Of course, there are some tricks from the companies that are sending advertisements that they send you to you with your name and your address. So in that case, it's personalized, so you can still have it, but at least you can opt out for a lot of junk that you don't need and they are just there in your mailbox. Important is also to use the paper that is used on from one side for draft paper for other notes. So not every time you're using uh, new papers and to print uh, both sides by default. And I would add also to, to print black and white as well. Then we go to waste and is the last category that had a lot of things. Um, so I have divided that not only about recycling because all most of the people are saying, yes, I recycle. As you see, 42%, 42 people are actually saying that they're recycling uh, paper, plastic, glass, and aluminum. But May, uh, it's uh, recycling or wish cycling, which means I throw it in the way in the recycling bin and I wish that it will get recycled. Because most of the times we see that the uh, amount of things that are actually can be recycled as, is much less than we expect. Uh, to separate bio waste it goes very well, to return bottles and cans. And I'm actually very happy because with Bin Free, uh, we uh, did an environmental uh, assessment last year in December to see how much of uh, deposit packages we have collected and how much glass we have collected. And actually, if we have done more harm to the environment or uh, we benefited the environment and the emissions, and hopefully our emissions uh, were positive. So actually with what we have collected, the impact was, uh, was good. Uh, also, disposing electronic waste and recycling batteries, lamps and cartridges, which actually are dangerous if they are not uh, disposed properly. And after I put some um, options regarding how to reduce your waste, not recycle or dispose it, but how you can reduce it. One of the ways basically is to buy as little package items with as little package as possible, because in that way you don't have to deal with the package. And most of the times the package is plastic. So less, much less possibilities that this item can be recycled. The second is to get rid of any single use item, starting from using a refillable or reusable, if you want, so water bottles than to the single use ones. I'm not saying that you will not be in a situation in your life that you will never use again, but if you still eliminate the number of your using of your uses, so, for instance, if you can calculate how many, if, if you are buying, for instance, one bottle per day for one year, that's uh, already 365 bottles, plastic bottles. But if you have a refillable water bottle and you use it for one year, you has, have saved, mostly 365 plastic bottles from, from the use. The same applies for the reusable cups for takeaway hot beverages, either for coffee, 
or for tea or whatever else uh, you're drinking and you're enjoying. And I'm very happy that last semester we managed with uh, Hello with the Life project to try to reduce the use of single use uh, coffee cups within the university. And the same for takeaway food, uh, to use reusable food containers than uh, single use. I guess with uh, uh, the delivery companies, this is quite difficult. However, they have two types. There is that they are uh, the type six, the plastic ones that you cannot be recycled, but they can be washed and reused. And those that are made from sugarcane that actually can be composted directly. So you can use it uh, alternatively or choose restaurants that are more eco-friendly. And now, as I know, that uh, Ringkarp has started as well piloting in Tallinn and I hope uh, they will get more and more popular uh, from the chains, the food chains. And let's hope that this will be reduced by the production by itself. Then is to bring your own bag to the supermarket. And they see that most of the people are actually vote for that. And I'm pretty happy. Personally, I discovered that in Estonia because in Greece, the, the plastic bags is something that is part of you <laughs> because it's something that was cheap. Uh, cheap. They, it wasn't charged for years. And it was something that you could always find something to do with or to store things or to move things. So people weren't having this mentality to actually go to the supermarket with their own bags. But this has started changing. And also for students studying in Tallinn University, there are so many opportunities to get this amazing, reusable, beautiful bags that you can use for traveling, for storing, for going to the store and so on. So that's a great uh, option. And Another thing that I learned here, and I learned it from a Greek friend of me, and the first year I was here, is that she was going to the supermarket and buy uh, fruit and vegetables without plastic bags. Uh, in my mind, it was impossible because somebody had to scale and check if I have cheated according to how many things I have taken. So I was using the plastic bags and just one day she told me, oh, you know, you don't need to do that. They just pass it in the counter without you having in the plastic bags. I tried the first time I was feeling that I will go to prison and they will arrest me because I didn't use the plastic bag. But in the end, nothing of this happened and I don't buy any more fruit and vegetables in plastic bags. Uh, it depends, of course, how many you have. And then you have, again, other alternatives that you can use different types of bags uh, that are specifically um, designed for this. And the last one uh, of this slide is that I use bamboo toothbrush to brush my teeth. It's actually a more sustainable option because the toothbrushes cannot be recycled. Uh, so bamboo toothbrushes are, can be composted. So besides the bristles, because most of the times they're not made from natural, but you can just take them out. And there's a much more sustainable way of uh, brushing your teeth. And I could say that you can feel it if you make the switch you can feel it in your hands, you can feel it in your mouth, it, it feels differently uh, every time you brush your teeth. Um, and then I can move to the, the next slide. That is, again, how you can reduce your waste, starting with, besides the, uh, the toothbrush, is about the mouth hygiene to start using toothpaste alternatives as uh, toothpaste tablets or powder instead of cubes. Um, the toothpaste tablets, personally, I haven't tried them. I have tried the, the, um, the powder. Uh, they look for me as a chewing gum, so I really believe that I will start <laughs> eating them. So I'm going with the powder and be more safe. But it's not only about that uh, the package is about also what it's made from, because most of the um, toothpastes are chemicals and we have seen also how to make uh, toothpaste uh, with the natural products that you have at home already in the in the workshop protect yourself protect your hormonal health from pollution uh, another thing that was very happy that this at least from the half of the female population that filled out this form was that they use reusable menstrual products which is a huge waste um, 
we learned how to make beeswax wrapping paper. Only eight people use it, but I'm not sure when they answer the questionnaire. So I hope that with our workshop with Lisa, more people uh, start making their beeswax wrapping paper. In, and for me, it's also a great uh, solution to upcycle actually clothes that you don't want or you don't need or cartons or whatever, because you can give actual life to something that doesn't have and cannot be used somehow differently within your house. Um, also, uh, reusable silicone baking paper, which is amazing. And baking paper is something that you just throw away every time you use it mostly, especially if it's oil or whatever, but with the silicone one, you just wash it and you can use it again. The one that I have and I used the last two years, uh, it's green, so it's beautiful, and uh, it's, it's, it's worth its money. I'm not promoting them, I'm just like very uh, happy with the use of them, and I think it's that the solutions are there. We just have to try to find them out and trying them on. I say with solid shampoo bars or solid dish soap, uh, bamboo cotton pads or reusable ones, um, according to each person. And again, about the drinks that sometimes you can actually, instead of using tea bags, you can use leaf, uh, loose leaf tea, um, or to refuse the plastic straws, 50 people, I guess that there was a huge campaign thing, a huge discussion last year about the plastic straws and to see that 50 people actually uh, opt out for straws. I'm like, yes, this campaign has worked. <laughs> Uh, the same with the toilet paper or toilet uh, uh, paper towels, that there are companies that actually selling recycled paper, toilet paper or bamboo one. It's still produced, I think, in China. However, it has the responsibly produced. So I'm, I'm trying to, to do search more about that. But I think it's a, a great way to don't... Uh, to, to avoid the package, but also be sure that what you're using is not coming from a forest somewhere in the world. And about smoking, most of the people are actually neither smoke nor smoking. 45 people out of 56, I guess it's a quite nice uh, percentage regarding uh, smoking uh, habits. And also those that are smoking to don't throw uh, cigarette butts on the streets. Uh, Let's Do It World has done a great campaign in Tallinn with this um, green, oh, not green, sorry, uh, yellow images on the pavements that actually says that C starts from here. So don't throw your cigarette bats uh, inside. I don't know how it's called in English. This holds anyway on the stream that they connect directly from the water. And um, let's keep up the like, green spirit. I'm sure that there's just a small, let's say, introduction about how uh, um, we can embrace sustainability in our daily lives and how many things we can do. And that actually nobody, uh, we are already doing things and we have to change this narrative that the solution is coming from somewhere outside of us and not from us within inside. And every single choice that you make is actually a political action, if you want uh, to put it in the sense that you decide if you want to prevent or you decide if you want to continue this chaotic situation that is happening at the moment. And I'm not talking about the climate, I'm talking for in general the topic of sustainability. So that's the presentation about um, Green Heroes.